to yours. Uh, can you please um, introduce yourself and um, uh, proceed with your uh, speech? Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to the audience from all the parts of the world and the SDSN influence. My name is Renato Siminelli and I'm a SDSN member in Brazil. Again, thanks for the presence and support of the audience in the discussions. It is a pleasure to be sharing this subject with you all. Since 2018, as a, as a member of SDSN, the Institute Quadrilateral, the management system of Geopark Quadrilateral Ferrifero in Brazil, under UNESCO, had been organizing initiatives, webinars, international and local meetings to promote the 17 SDGs as development anchors to mining systems. Other segments of high territory influence or impact under the same principles are energy, agriculture, forestry, among, among others. The growth of S ESG practices and strategies in many important segments as that SDGs and ESG practice parameters and indicators be compatible, aligned or bridged. Although today ESG is strategically restricted to internal industrial operations, the future is for both to be managed, integrated or overlapped. Thank you very much and I hope, uh, I wish a great uh, event today. Please, Ebert. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Ebert Ramos. I'm working in G81 Group. I am CEO at G81 ESG uh, Analytics. G81 is a four companies group, which are G21 Mineral Consulting, G21 Virtual Reality, G21 Geotechnology, and G21 ESG Analytics. I hope we, we can share a good. Uh, information and opportunities to work. Christian. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Christian Freitas. I'm work at uh, GF21 Group as a special uh, GIS. And I will show you today some cases that we work uh, for the state of Sao Paulo. Can I begin the cases? Sure, Christian. Uh, go ahead. Uh, you want to introduce something, uh, uh, Abbott? Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I would like to 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 share my my, my screen here. A moment, please. Uh, Can you see my, my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, we are going to, to talk about bridging SDGs and SGs throughout the geospatial insights. We divide the, the presentation in four parts. Uh, who we are, uh, our approach about ESG, some cases and the ESGs as, as a competitive advantage. Uh, as I said, G21 is a four group, a companies group, and, and uh, the group has a multidisciplinary team uh, with over then 40 years experience in consultants, in engineering, geoscience, in geotechnologies. Uh, at G21, geoanalytics, ESG analytics, uh, we seek to make our client investment more efficient and sustainable through the geotechnology and geoscience. Um, okay, but what is ESG? This, this, over. It's okay. Well, ESG can be summar summarized as practices to describe the quality of company social, environmental, and governmental performance. Uh, the term was used for the first time in 2004 
by the United Nations and the World Bank in a report called Required Wins, initially as a provocation to the financial market. Since then, the market in, in, gen, in general in, has been consolidating the view of acting in accordance with ESG uh, standards, increase the competitiveness. Uh, uh, and, well, uh, according with this view, ESG data driving approach is essential to support uh, the decision making. Analysis, analysis and planning need to consider the specificity of the territory. Geospatial data must be integrated to ESG and observational data to generate insights about assets, projects, companies, and geographic areas. In a nutshell, Risks are in the intersection among project data, environmental data, and social data. Well, there are several standards to guide ESG's implementation, such as GRI, SASB, TSN, and so on. Uh, most of them start with the materiality, which consists in identifying and prioritizing material, material issues to uh, stakeholders and not just to shareholders and to address ESG, SDGs targets. And here we have one possible bridge. Uh, we can consider three basic steps to incorporate or to improve ESG practice. Defining materiality, planning goals, actions, and investments, monitoring and report results. So a data-driven uh, ESG approach uh, uh, in, uh, in, a, in a ESG uh, 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 data-driven approach, materiality plans and report uh, must be based on data. That means it is required a uh, data infra infrastructure designed to connect to public and proprietary data sources, store different data formats, allow effective monitoring and reporting. The data sets include satellite images, observational data, mapping, documents and reporting, data stream like video, 3D data, social network data, and so on. Uh, G G21 Geotechnology has already developed several geospatial data and data science projects, some of them to support ESG implementation and to address ESG uh, SDG targets. Now, Christian uh, will present you some, some example of these this, this projects. Christian, uh, do you want to, to share your, your screen or you can use this, my, my screen? I, I will share my screen. Okay. Everybody can see? Yeah. Uh, okay, everyone. Uh, so let's uh, uh, go to the to the cases. We have two cases to present to you today. Uh, the first case, it's about uh, uh, ecological economic zoning of the state of Sao Paulo. We call it ZE Z for short. And the second case is for resilient Sao Paulo municipalities. It's a project focus, focus on uh, climate change and how can the local government can uh, face the, the consequences of ch or climate change. And uh, the second case is more uh, focused on actions, measures, projects. And the, the ZE or the zoning, ecological economic zoning of Sao Paulo, São Paulo, it's more like a policy, but uh, we gotta get a little bit uh, into the cases. Uh, just to, to to have a little context, the the zoning, the instrument of zoning, uh, it's defined by law in Brazil. For those who, who are not uh, uh, here in Brazil, uh, uh, it's defined by, by by a federal law in nine in 1981. The law created the instrument, uh, uh, this policy. And in 2002, the policy was regulated by a decree. 
Uh, in the decree, he has two focus, two main points, uh, the ecological sustainability and the social economy. Inside the social economy, there are concepts of economic growth, and uh, I already make some correlations with the SDGs because it's important to know the 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 the, the concept, the initial concept of the the Z, the, the zoning uh, already uh, gathered this kind of concept. Uh, in the case of ecological sustainability, you can talk about the the goal six, fourteen, and sixteen, and in the case of social economy, we're talking about uh, economic growth, uh, protection of natural resources, uh, presenting uh, favor the presenting the, the future generation, uh, recognition of the intrinsic value of biodiversity. All this, this comes from the decree uh, in 2002, a federal decree. Uh, for any states in Brazil to create their own zoning, they have to establish their own uh, uh, laws. Uh, in Sao Paulo, in 2002, they made this this uh, uh, this decree uh, and this uh, the creating the instrument of ZE. And when they are, were created, they just specify some guidelines to 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 focus to to the the actions that will take on this project. The, gu the guidelines was resilience to climate change, uh, water protection, biodiversity protection, competitive. Already okay. They already mentioned uh, the 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 connection between the instrument, this policy instrument, uh, with ESG and SDGs. Uh, they already uh, sit in the documentation. Uh, these strategic guidelines have been used as a thematic focus on the preparation of ZE, and in general are connected with the main world agendas focused on sustainability, adaptation to climate change, implementation of the 2030 agenda. So they call it uh, ESDG, uh, SDGs, and ESG as instruments to correlate with the actions that would take place in this policy, in this instrument they will create. So they came with this challenge to create this, this ZE with all these uh, ambitious goals. And uh, GA21 uh, was called to help them, the state of Sao Paulo, to achieve. Uh, the goals of this project. Uh, the project has three main steps. It has a diagnosis step, has a prediction step, and uh, an implementation step. In the diagnosis, they work gathering, integrating various maps and reports. All this data has to be integrated to be analyzed. And with this uh, analysis, they can make predictions, create scenarios uh, and projections to climate change. It's a very important uh, part of the, the discussion. Uh, in, in the end, uh, you can make uh, with all this information, we make the zoning of the state of Sao Paulo. It's important to, to, to highlight that the zoning is not, uh, is not a, um, a simple byproduct of the uh, overlay of information is a discussion. It's uh, 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 the product of analysis of the specialists. So it's not about uh, pure geoprocessing. It's about discussion also, uh, mainly about discussion and uh, 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 coming to a, 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 an agreement between these specialists. Uh, to achieve these steps and the goals of these steps, uh, GA21 uh, proposed for the, the state of Sao Paulo, especially for the, the, the Secretary of Infrastructure and Environment, uh, the creation of a SDI. Uh, the SDI would be a, a, an interesting tool to achieve this, this component because uh, it can help uh, any uh, all these steps in in the end you can discuss and create the the, the zoning that will be uh, uh, favor uh, the goals that established in the beginning of the project. 
So uh, for the first step, uh, we understand that uh, uh, organization, the, the, the organized information it give is access is very important because we have a, a vast amount of information uh, spread to multiple institutions. Uh, some information was created by the, 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 the specialists on self. So we have a, a, a place to put this information, integrate this information and document this information. Uh, the SDI is the SDI. It's important. The, the infrastructure is important because it has the concept of metadata. So uh, uh, creating a, 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 a system to to organize the metadata, uh, uh, we can achieve the organizational information for people to consult, for people to start to elaborate the this analysis that come to to from a necessity of understanding what's happened and make the diagnosis, diagnosis of uh, environmental and economic uh, of Sao Paulo, state of Sao Paulo. Uh, so uh, uh, we create, uh, in the end I will show some numbers to, so, to, so you can see how many information, how many layers we gather uh, in this uh, metadata system. Uh, also, we have the, the second step, the step that focuses on creating scenarios and climate proje projections. The main uh, 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 source of information for climate change and climate scenarios uh, came from the uh, 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 project, a specific project came, uh, named Procheta. Uh, the information was uh, um, distributed uh, on internet, but in a raw format. So it's very difficult to use uh, uh, immediately in any GIS uh, software. So what we did uh, to gather this information uh, in this project called Project Projeta, you have many uh, climate variables uh, with scenarios that goes to uh, the year of 2100. Um, in English, it would be to 20, 2100, something like that. Uh, it's very far, so it's important to see uh, at least they establish a, a limit of to 2050 the year and they will make these projections, these predictions of uh, climate. So one of the steps, main steps of the, the, the that we did in the project was how to gather this information this raw information and transform this information and uh, this data and, informa and uh, uh, information to be consumed. Uh, we did this uh, using uh, a concept of geographic ETL. ETL is a, uh, uh, became more than a tool. It's a concept of extract and transform uh, uh, data GIS data mainly in the case of GIS 21. We work with GIS data, we can extract this information from the site, from this project, uh, and uh, we get together in a database and you create a, a tool to be used in the GIS software, the conventional GIS software, to transform and process this information. So the specialists that work at the, at the zoning, uh, they can choose the prediction model they can choose the climate variable and they can choose a time frame with these three with these three uh, uh, variables these three three uh, parameters they can create many maps uh, uh, in the case of ze they ended up creating uh, almost 100 map layers to be used to discuss the climate change in the state of sao paulo it's a very interesting uh, 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 the, the source of the information, it's a very vast, very interesting, and the, the creation of a system that can extract this information and transform this information was also very uh, interesting from the GIS point of view. It's, uh, we are very proud that we can make this happen for the specialists to use this information and discuss the analysis with, with these specialists. All this information was transformed in maps and show uh, to be used and discussed uh, with people. Né? People from the government, people from the society. This is, 
it's important to highlight that the ZE is not a discussion only for the specialist. Uh, uh, at some point, all the decision have to be uh, uh, that has to, to to come to agreement with the social, the, the civil civil society. Uh, in the end, to to accomplish uh, the 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 third and last step. We have to integrate all this information, all this analysis in an environment, in a system, and we create, we choose uh, 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 not only a web GIS, but uh, uh, a system that can create many contexts of visualization. We are not talking about only maps. We talk about maps and dashboards. So from the metadata, we can gather this information and construct some context. At every box that you see in the screen, it's a context, uh, a thematic context, in which the specialist will discuss some something so about climate change, something about uh, uh, water protection, about biodiversity, about inequalities. Uh, uh, all this uh, uh, environment, all this this webgs, all these dashboards were created by the specialist using the information that we gather and documented in the, the metadata. Uh, <clears throat> uh, these maps was offered to the specialists. They organize every context uh, uh, according to the objective, to the goals that they have to discuss. They can overlay this information, analyze this information, overlap all, all this information, and not only maps, but dashboards and maps. It can uh, work with uh, this kind of modern tools. Today, they are very common, but uh, uh, at the time, they are uh, very restrict uh, uh, the type of information we have to, to, to work, all working and uh, in, uh, international standards which is sometimes very difficult to, to find the, 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 the right tools to do, the, to do this. So we have many information that we gather. Uh, in the end, it was very interesting because the SDI in itself uh, can accomplish or become uh, 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 an instrument to achieve uh, a goal of SDG. Uh, in the case we're discussing about the, the nine uh, goal, the goal uh, number nine, uh, especially in the access to information and communication technology. So the, this infrastructure that we create to help the specialists of State of Sao Paulo to define the zoning, the economic and ecological zoning of the state, uh, uh, the instrument that we create on itself, it became uh, uh, an objective to achieve uh, 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 an SDG goal. Uh, to uh, give access to information. All this platform, all the, this SDG, SDI, uh, it's free to be accessible to anyone that was, uh, that get interested and in, in dive into this, all this information. Uh, in the end, the ZE gathered more than 200, 2000 uh, uh, layers of information, all documented with metadata organized in more than 160 maps and dashboards. The information which, uh, which is a vast and a, a very diverse kind of information. This was the, the case of the, the ZE. Uh, the second case, it's more uh, specific about the the, the the climate change to help the local government, the municipalities, to face uh, climate change uh, in the, the state of Sao Paulo. Uh, it was choose uh, 13 uh, local governments uh, in, in one region, littoral region of Sao Paulo, to work with this uh, uh, project. The project has a, a, a main goal. It's represent the opportunity to discuss and propose policies and actions related to adaptation and climate resilience based on sharing experience, information, and good practices. Uh, uh, in the case of ZE, we talk more about policy, uh, structure and defined policies. In the case of PMPR, for short, is the, the, the nickname of this project. 
it's more about uh, actions, measure, or uh, projects, uh, list of projects that the local government have to make to face the climate change. Uh, if you, you're gonna look at this project, specific project uh, from the SDG perspective, uh, in all its doc documentation, they already mentioned the objectives, the goals 5, 11, 13, and 17 of the SDG. And from the S, uh, SGDs, from the SGG, S, ESGs, sorry, from the ESG perspective, uh, it's very important for them uh, uh, to achieve good governance, uh, to look at uh, financial resource, all the solutions, all the proposed measures has to be sustainable from the financial point of view. This is very important because we're dealing with government, local governments, but they have to, to, to be very careful about the, the how much they could spend in this kind of solution. They have to, to look for the ecosystem services. It's a, a new concept. To, to tackle the problems, but uh, understand that the problems is, is complex and deal with many uh, aspects. So we have to, to deal with the ecosystem services and instruments for warning and response. So uh, we have to create some kind of practice uh, or practices that uh, local government can use to help to uh, 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 prevent any problems uh, on, on consequences of climate change. It's a very important, specific, specifically in the state of Sao Paulo in these last years. <clears throat> uh, so uh, again, the goal uh, of the, the project itself is to encourage municipalities in the state of Sao Paulo to organize and use data and information collected in project and state plans as a useful tool for planning local measure to adapt to climate change. So the focus of the project, uh, we gather the, the, the local government representatives and make them create some measures, some projects, uh, uh, sustainable projects to, to avoid, to prevent, to, to correct problems uh, uh, in consequences of climate change. Uh, so GA21, uh, because of you have this experience with STI in Sao Paulo, we are uh, we are called to help them to achieve these goals. Um, we propose uh, the use of the uh, uh, GIS tools that is compatible 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 with the STI because we have to gather many information. Not, uh, um, not only because the, this information is important to define the projects, but because of the diagnosis that some local governments uh, have deficiency and define and create their own diagnosis. So we have to gather this information. Uh, we have proposed the use of GS2 that is compact, compatible with the STI. A GS2 that is capable of, of connect and analyze data coming from geo services. This is very specific because uh, they are not producing information. They are gathered information to, to work with information that belongs to other institutions. You have uh, to de deliver a, a tool that is capable of collecting this information and analyze all this information. And in the end, they have to discuss and create the solution for these problems. So we create a, G a GIS tool that allow co-creation. Uh, for that, we work with the, the, the concept of geo design. It's a framework. Some of you may, may uh, are familiar with this concept that help people create together information based on geographic data to 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 gather solutions that will be accepted by the the majority of uh, of people. So we create this 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 tool. Uh, we delivered for him the this kind of tool to to work the, with the problem. Uh, again, uh, the the this this ambient uh, this view tool can create many contexts of visualization, not only maps but dashboards uh, also. 
uh, each local government has its own environment, has its own uh, ambient, uh, uh, its own uh, context to view uh, the information of his local uh, information. They uh, uh, create and organize this information. They, they did this. It's not us that create and organize. They, they made this. We uh, teach them to, to, to organize this information. Uh, inside this view context, they create the information, organize the information according to some uh, criteria. Uh, uh, information were, were uh, organized uh, according to adaptability. Oh, let's remember we are all we are always talking about climate change. So the, the information was organized about uh, adaptability, uh, sensitivity, exposure, risk, and of course, climate. Uh, in, in each context uh, gather more than 100 uh, data layers, map layers, uh, so the, 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 the specialists can work through and analyze what's happening in their own uh, region, what's, uh, what's going on and what's going to happen with the climate change. Uh, inside this context, uh, they are capable of connected to any SDI available uh, in Brazil specifically. They can connect this information in any format, uh, bring more information to the table to discuss the solutions and, and to define uh, or create a, a a landscape of what is happening in the, the, the region, and then they can uh, uh, pass to define the solution. To go to the solution phase, uh, we work with the gel design. We work them, we teach them to work with this concept of gel design. Uh, just to, to give a little bit of context, uh, gel design is a, a construction, a planning method in which the creation uh, of a proposal and impact of simulation informed by the geographic context are strongly linked. Well, what we are trying to say here is the people will create the, solu the solutions, create the measures, the actions, the projects in this region. And they have to, in the process of creating the solutions, they have to understand what impact these solutions have to do uh, with this local environment. So it's very important to make these solutions, understanding what is happening uh, to the local environment and of course, to the climate change process. So uh, this tool is important because we, we highlight the focus of the, the goal of the project. It's the useful tool for planning. Geo design was, was a, 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 an important part of the solution because it is a tool for planning in local measure. Uh, it's important for the, 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 the representative of the local government to understand that they have available this kind of tool and information to work with. So uh, we, we teach them, uh, teach them. Uh, in the, the time we are uh, going through the pandemic, so we can go, uh, we can do, you can't do a, a, a presence meeting, so we have to do all everything full online, 100% online. So we have to teach them to use and create this context of visualization and how to use geo design uh, uh, to in the understand the information and work, define the solutions. We did this uh, many uh, uh, meetings, online meetings with uh, very uh, many uh, important local governments and state governments, representative of local government and state government. Uh, in the end, we presented this tool in which the, 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 the local government can, uh, inside this, this visualization context, th this context of visualization, create uh, the solutions. The solutions that have to be uh, uh, special, that has to be located in, uh, in this space in the geographic space, uh, because uh, once they define what kind of measure, what kind of actions or solutions or projects they want to uh, go for it, we have to analyze this project with, uh, with, this, uh, with this, some kind of uh, metrics to define the impact or risk 
of these projects don't, don't be uh, uh, sustainable. Uh, in this this screen that you see now, we can the people define, they draw the the solution, and uh, in real time we can establish. Uh, what positive impact this solution can have. In this example, I, I give you the SDGs uh, 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 goals. So uh, in this particular case, we are me uh, measuring the positive impact of the solutions, this specific solution in uh, the SDG goals, in positive impact and negative impact. With this, we can, uh, uh, after uh, discussed, all the solutions, proposed solutions, and uh, from the list, in the end, we have a list of projects, of measures, of actions that people will uh, choose, those uh, who, uh, whose uh, projects will be approved, whose projects will be uh, disapproved by all the, the collective of specialists and uh, defined in this uh, spatial context. So it's, it was very interesting because it can uh, uh, already uh, make gel design work uh, in some practical terms. Uh, it's very interesting uh, uh, to, the, to see the, uh, the, the tools helping the local government created these instruments to help them to get a list of projects that can be choose to be uh, put in, in execution uh, in short term. It's a, uh, well, all the both cases, the, the ZE, the zoning cases and the, 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 the resilience case of uh, uh, local government, what's very interesting because make us uh, not only use GIS data, but to create GIS tools that can work with this data and, and uh, uh, get into practical terms in finding the, the solutions. Uh, I hope I could be clear. <laughs> we can discuss later. Thank you, guys. Uh, okay, Christian, thank you. Uh, just to, to, to conclude the presentation, our presentation, uh, uh, Please. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Christian. Uh, just to conclude, concluding, uh, as you know, ESG, SDGs, and ESG is about sustainability in overall. But it's also about creating and protective value to the companies. Uh, in short term, SDGs and ESG improve uh, operational efficiency, enables capital access, reduce the risk of uh, regulatory sanction, and helps uh, obtain and maintain the social license to, to, to companies. And the middle term and mid and long term, it increases competitivity, revenue, if, uh, innovation governance and reputation of in brand value. Um, well, well, it, it, it was our, our presentation. Uh, to any one specialist, uh, help companies, sorry, uh, supported by geotechnology, to any one specialist, help companies to implement and report uh, ESG best practices and address the SDG targets which communicates environment and social responsibility, uh, solid governance, reduce costs, increase profitability, improve reputation and resilience. Thank you very much. And uh, we are available to discuss in the, in the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Christian. And thank you, Renato, for your um, presentations. Uh, it looks like we already have a lot of questions in the chat. So uh, what I'll do is I'll quickly just go through my slides um, and then we'll open it up uh, for Q&A and uh, discussion um, where the participants can raise their hand and mute themselves or use the chat uh, function to ask any questions that they have of um, any of the presenters uh, that we heard from today. 
so once again, uh, I'm uh, Miriam Rabi. I'm uh, with the Sustainable Development Solutions Network. Um, so you heard a little bit about SDSN from uh, Renato. Um, let me go ahead. I forgot to share my screen. Um, I can start with a very brief um, introduction to our organization. Uh, so SDSN was launched uh, in 2012 under the auspices of the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, um, and the mission of our organization is to support uh, the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals and the Paris Climate Agreement um, at local, national, and global levels. Um, we are a global network of knowledge institutions uh, that are uh, working on uh, the SDGs uh, currently, uh, and I'm sure uh, this number uh, is probably uh, not the most up-to-date, but uh, the last time I checked, we have about 1,800 member institutions, where about 80% uh, of them are academic uh, and research institutions, all doing um, incredible work um, on the SDGs. So we have a lot of geographic networks uh, that are established. So as you heard, uh, Renato is leading SDSN Brazil. Uh, we have active uh, national and regional networks all around the world uh, where uh, academics, NGOs, uh, CSOs uh, are all working on uh, different aspects related to uh, the sustainable development goals. We've already heard um, from Christian and Nurbert about the SDGs. Uh, and I think everyone's already familiar with them, so I don't think I need to go into too much detail or provide um, an introduction, uh, but just to kind of set the scene um, for uh, the work that we do at SDSN, um, we have a set of uh, 17 goals, uh, 169 indicators, and 231 uh, um, two, 169 targets and 231 indicators. Uh, that help uh, member states uh, to measure and monitor progress uh, against each of these uh, goals. Um, so similar to some of the work that uh, Christian and Herbert mentioned in terms of addressing environmental, social, um, uh, and economic issues, uh, those are kind of the same three core principles of the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, and uh, they cover a wide range of um, issues, as you can see, poverty, hunger, access to clean energy, um, climate and environmental issues. Uh, and uh, a lot of the indicators and targets are trying to measure access to services, or um, we have to understand uh, population movements uh, in order to um, uh, measure some of the indicators um, uh, for the SDGs. So that's where geospatial information and technologies uh, come into play and play a very important role uh, in um, monitoring, implementing, and achieving uh, the SDGs. Uh, so we already heard from Urban and, and uh, Christian a few examples of how they're using um, GIS and geospatial information and different tools uh, to support ESG principles. Um, so uh, today I'm going to provide a little bit of information on how we use uh, different geospatial sources uh, and uh, tools for the work that we do at um, SDSN. Uh, so um, as I mentioned, SDSN on the one hand is a global network um, of uh, member institutions that are all doing incredible work related to the SDGs. But within our secretariat, we also have thematic networks uh, that focus on different angles and aspects related to the implementation or, or monitoring of the sustainable development goals. Uh, I'm uh, leading uh, the geospatial arm of SDSN. So one of those um, uh, thematic networks uh, within the secretariat and uh, our focus is on advancing the use and production of timely and geospatial uh, data uh, and technologies uh, for the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, this program was launched uh, about three years ago now in partnership with ESRI and National Geographic. And um, oops, uh, over the, the past three years, our work has kind of evolved into 
um, uh, three core priorities. Uh, so the first one is data curation, production, and visualization. Uh, so for this work stream, what we do is we work with a lot of uh, different teams from different sectors all around the world that are doing innovative work uh, using non-traditional data sources to measure and monitor um, uh, issues related to uh, the SDGs. Uh, so we work very closely with the teams. We have a set of criteria that we use to kind of review and evaluate the data against. And if it meets our criteria, we work with the data providers and these teams to basically um, package the data in a way that would be accessible to a wider uh, SDG community. So whether you're a policymaker with very limited time uh, or a researcher that's interested in doing further analysis uh, or a journalist who's curious to you know what know what the state of um, uh, some of the SDGs are, you know, as, as it is, you know, in the past hour or in the past day. Um, this is kind of a space uh, we've created where we feature a lot of those data sets. Uh, we'll go through a couple examples together. Uh, we provide all the metadata, all the underlying geospatial layers, um, the original data sets. Uh, so it's um, a repository of uh, data layers and information um, that those who are concerned with the SDGs can use uh, for their own work uh, as well. Um, so uh, the next, the second uh, work stream kind of um, evolved because we realized that, um, you know, uh, dashboards are a great tool. It's a great way to kind of understand um, what the data set is trying to communicate. Uh, but at the same time, um, some audiences want to better understand what kind of impact that data has. Why is it important to collect that data? What impact is it having, um, you know, on their community or in their society? Uh, and so story maps and storytelling kind of allows us to create uh, a narrative that further contextualizes the data. It allows us to feature use cases, different research projects, uh, the way different tools and applications are being used um, uh, among a community uh, or a company. Um, and so uh, it's a way to uh, further contextualize the data and also add um, more multimedia content. Uh, so it's not just the data that you're interacting with. A lot of times, um, you know, companies or organizations or a research team, they have a, a story to tell about, you know, why the data was produced or how it was produced and the impact that it's having. So it allows them to embed videos, add other kinds of uh, multimedia content. So uh, it's become a really great tool, even for us internally uh, to use for a lot of our reporting uh, as well. And then the third um, core priority is focused on education and capacity development. Uh, so the president uh, of our organization, Professor uh, Jeffrey Sachs, um, he's very keen on kind of mainstreaming GIS and uh, increasing awareness about uh, geospatial information and technologies uh, among different user groups and different age groups. Uh, and so we have a wide range of different programs and activities um, that uh, hopefully uh, are are supporting uh, different um, SDG uh, communities uh, with better understanding some of the tools and data sets that we have available on our website and other platforms uh, as well so that they can integrate kind of a geospatial lens into the work that they're doing related to the SDGs. Um, so this is just kind of a snapshot of some of the maps and dashboards uh, that we have uh, on our platform. Uh, we have about 50 plus um, data partnerships. Uh, so I'll show you a couple of examples and you'll see what the page looks like and where you can find all the, the information. Um, this is just kind of a snapshot of different kinds of, of um, categories of story maps that we feature on our platform. Uh, so um, I'll show you a couple examples of how countries are using story maps to report on their SDGs. Um, we also, uh, as I mentioned, kind of use the story map tool um, to feature different technologies um, that have been developed. So, uh, for example, we have one story map um, from the American University of Beirut, where they've developed a map that supports farmers with smart irrigation. So it kind of is an intro to the app, but it's also um, provides some context on how it's being used. Um, and then uh, we also use the story map tool for different uh, use cases, uh, research projects, data initiatives, um, and different activities uh, will feature. Um, uh, I'll show you a few examples uh, from, from Brazil uh, later throughout the presentation. Oops. 
Um, and then, as I mentioned, the third kind of um, uh, core priority is focus on education and capacity development. So um, one of our most popular programs is our annual summer GIS program uh, for middle school and high school students, which we just concluded, I believe, last week. Um, so it's a 10 week program. Uh, it's free and virtual and open to um, uh, students from anywhere. Uh, and uh, we usually provide lessons, basic training on GIS, lessons on the SDGs, and also on digital storytelling. Um, we have guest speakers um, from uh, different sectors, uh, talk to students about different uh, topics related to the SDGs this summer. Um, the uh, the program was focused on COP28 and a lot of different climate challenges. Uh, and throughout the summer, the students choose a topic, um, usually kind of uh, a, um, a sustainability challenge that they're facing in their own communities. And they use the, the skills and the knowledge from this program to develop um, a, a solution or um, uh, to do a research project. And they present uh, their final uh, project in a story map format. So we're currently uh, reviewing the submissions and we'll be promoting and, and sharing uh, the results uh, in the next uh, couple of months. So uh, we usually host this program every summer. And then we um, have engaged in other uh, uh, activities. Um, so we worked with a couple of different uh, academic institutions that are also SDSN members, um, uh, like SDSN Brazil, uh, to help them integrate GIS into the research projects that they were doing. Uh, so uh, we provided some training, um, kind of went through a little bit of planning and design with them, uh, and um, they all did a really wonderful job uh, in kind of using GIS uh, for uh, different research projects that they each uh, were undertaking. Uh, we have all of these um, available on our website. I'll share a link in the chat after I'm done um, so you can take a look at the incredible work that they've done. Um, and uh, we also provide uh, create um, different uh, lessons or tutorials or step-by-step -step guides um, that can help you kind of get started with ArcGIS or if you're a little bit more advanced to learn how to use uh, some of the different uh, amazing tools that they have. So uh, we have a series of um, video tutorials on just, you know, basic kind of ArcGIS um, uh, lessons that you could follow through. Uh, or um, we have guides on how to use ArcGIS image to monitor vegetation change uh, over time. So depending on kind of where you're at in your ArcGIS uh, journey, um, we have material that can hopefully uh, support you. Um, these are just uh, uh, highlights um, of a couple of different um, uh, collaborations and partnerships we have. So we do connect with different geospatial centers and programs across different universities. So if we have anyone in the audience that we haven't connected uh, with yet, we'd be happy to um, explore synergies with you. We um, also collaborate with a lot of different uh, international initiatives that are also doing work on Earth observations and um, GIS. Uh, and we also engage uh, with um, uh, teams that are kind of trying to to promote data driven uh, narratives around the SDGs and advocate for the use of data. Uh, and so our some of our data sets have been featured in some of those global uh, campaigns. Um, uh, this is just uh, some uh, some of our contact uh, information and uh, where we kind of make announcements and promote some of the different. Uh, resources that we have available on our website. So feel free to follow us if you'd like to stay tuned on different updates and developments. Uh, I am quickly, I see that we're, we don't have a lot of time left. So maybe what I'll do is as we kind of open it up for q and I can just um, show some examples of the data sets and story maps in, in the background. So that will be kind of of the visual background in scene for um, uh, for you to explore. Uh, but I do want to leave room for a, a Q&A and discussion. Um, so we do have about 20 minutes left. So uh, perhaps we can get started uh, with uh, some of the questions. And I'll just share some links in the chat and show some of the visuals in, in the background. Great. So I do see that there are some questions in the chat. 
chat, for those who've already added them, would you like to unmute yourselves and ask the question? Um, or should we just go through the chat? Hi, Mariam. I, I'm happy to do this. I'm Irini Gallo. I added sure. two questions, actually. So I sure. can start with the one uh, for Christian, maybe. Uh, so the, it's actually two questions. Uh, I'm a teaching fellow here in Strathclyde University in Glasgow, and we are actually leading the Scottish uh, CSN uh, subgroup of the UK Bigger Regional Group. Uh, and I was really impressed by the work, congratulations, and would really like to learn more about the collaboration with the local authority and the framing of this work. So my question was about how, was it instigated by the local government or was it something that you suggested to them because uh, it, there needs to be, I guess, some level of understanding of GIS tools uh, as a baseline for this communication. So I'm really keen to understand more. And the second sub question was uh, about uh, if you have any publications on the criteria for adaptability sensitivity that you showed, because there seems to be a lot of decisions uh, there in terms of structuring the information. Thank you. Thank you. Can I can I answer, Jean? All right. Uh, oh, oh, I hope I see your name right, Irini. Uh, uh, in the 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 context of the the project. Uh, it is a, a state initiative. It's a, a, a cooperation between the state of Sao Paulo with the, the German Cooperation Agents for Sustainability, Sustainable Development. So uh, the, the short name for the agency GIZ, GIZ, I, I don't know in English how it will be named, but uh, they have many initiatives in Brazil. They produce uh, uh, many data, uh, many information uh, about climate change spe specifically. Uh, so the the main goal of this uh, this uh, project, the resilience project, is so the the local government, local authorities can make use of this vast information that can they, they produce along many years for many projects. Um, so uh, uh, it is a, a state initiative to to uh, gather the local government to make them uh, uh, part of the process of the the getting to a solution. Um, when they choose the representatives to the local government, it was specified specify that uh, it's important that some of the these representatives. Uh, have some knowledge of GIS, but not all. Not all. All representatives have this this information. Uh, 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 the project was not for, from all uh, the the states. Uh, they choose some uh, local government, some municipalities. Uh, uh, São Paulo has more than uh, six hundred municipalities. They choose only thirteen. Uh, it's a, 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 a prototype, let's say. Uh, um, uh, so if you ask for a criteria, since it's a prototype, they don't they don't they go for the projects to to see if this kind of methodology will work uh, with this local government. So they don't don't came with a specific, of criteria or of directives, they they uh, uh, they try to make uh, a project to see what will work and gather these local governments to work together. Uh, the project is a, a continual project; they don't end uh, in a time frame. They can work uh, uh, as uh, as long as the states uh, allow the, the the structure that we create. It's it's online, so they they gonna pick uh, municipalities and incorporate to the project and try to work uh, with this information. Uh, so we they don't have um, uh, any publications specifically to the criteria for sustainability because it it, it it came from the data. What kind of data people uh, can understand or can uh, comprehend? 
to use in this kind of solution. With a, a, it's more than a, more than a, a, a project to get to the solution on itself. It's more a, 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 maybe some kind of school to, to, to help the local government how to create solution using GIS information, uh, using GIS tools, and, uh, and, and gather all these SDG goals, ESG goals, and how can incorporate all this concept and create the solution. So it's more than a, 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 a more an apprentice project than a, a final project. So I, I hope I answered your question. Thank you. Yes, it was very comprehensive. <laughs> Thank you. Um, are there any other questions? Feel free to unmute yourself um, or add your question to the chat. Um, I see there are some questions about accessing the platforms. So, um, and I think my colleague has shared the links to some of our websites, but if you need more information, let us know. Um, I'm trying to look through the chat to see if I've missed any questions. Uh, yes, so the 10 week course, um, if you go to the SDGs Today website uh, under the education tab, you'll see um, uh, there's a page dedicated uh, so you can find all the material and recordings from um, previous years. Uh, we still haven't uploaded this year's um, uh, uh, recordings uh, or material yet. We'll probably do that in the next uh, month or so, um, but you'll find a lot of information uh, about the program on, on that page. Great. Thanks, Sanella, for sharing that in the chat. see um for uh, there's a question about events in Europe um so um SDSN if you go to the SDSN website that uh, my colleague has shared in the chat we usually do have announcements of all of our upcoming events uh, on the platform uh, so a lot of them are virtual um, and for the in-person ones you can kind of see if there are any uh, in Europe uh, that are listed on uh, the platform um, uh, great. Uh, and uh, yeah, for each of the other teams that presented, uh, I think we all uh, use our platforms and social media channels to promote any events. So keep an eye out for any that might be happening in person in, in Europe. Um, Bernardo, do you have a question? Would yes. You... Okay, go ahead. Question. Uh, the first one, what would be the, your system approach to updating uh, past and recent events? Okay, and future previews because we understand that this changes all the time. Okay, how this would be inserted in your your system? And second, um, are the the private sector appreciating the, this geospatial uh, approach to eventually develop develop project that would be of interest of of a group of of companies because this is public data available. And all this company will need those, uh, let's say, interprets for ESG and SDG, uh, let's say, joint development. Are they uh, starting to, let's say, look for a way to make it more economical and eventually contract it together? That's it. Thank you, Renato. Those are uh, two great questions. Um, I don't know if they're directed at me or um, maybe both teams, but I can I can give it a shot and then hand it over to uh, my colleagues from G twenty one to respond to that. Uh, so regarding the first question, uh, as you said, it's um, it's a it's a space um, in an environment where there's a lot of rapid change, and so it's kind of an ongoing discussion internally among our team and with a lot of our data partners just to keep up with 
a lot of the developments. Um, and in terms of how we kind of continue that discussion um, with our audience. So Renato, as um, you are aware, we've had these webinar series uh, where once a month we try to connect with a lot of our different users um, just to kind of update them on what we're doing and to also learn from them about the work that they're doing so that we can explore um, opportunities uh, to um, uh, collaborate and just explore uh, synergies and learn from the work that everyone's doing within the space. So that's kind of been our effort or using different international um, uh, uh, events uh, to uh, connect uh, with uh, with others within the space uh, to learn about what um, what the what they're doing as well. Uh, in terms of the private sector, so, um, uh, in the context of the work that we do, so Esri uh, is um, uh, a major partner uh, in um, you know a lot of the work that we do. Uh, they've made a lot of efforts uh, to engage um, other kind of um, private sector entities uh, within this space, uh, but also for them to connect with uh, the nonprofit space as well and to create um, opportunities uh, for them to collaborate and contribute particularly um, in the SDG space. Uh, there's also efforts um, within UNGGIM, which is the UN Committee uh, on Global uh, Geospatial Information Management. Uh, there is a subgroup on um, that's called the Private, Net Private Sector Network. Um, and so they, um, uh, I haven't been as active in that group, but I know that they are making efforts to try to make that connection uh, within the geospatial space uh, in particular. So there are efforts that are uh, being made, um, and uh, I think there's a lot more we can do, at least uh, with um, public-private partnerships uh, in the context of the SDG work that we're doing, but um, uh, still a long way to go. But I think that uh, we've definitely made uh, have made some, some progress um, uh, over the years, and the SDGs um, have mobilized some of these, some of these efforts. Thank you. Charles, Christian, Herbert. Sorry, go. For sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, uh, in, in this case of Sao Paulo State, the main goal is uh, to provide a dynamic tool to, to have a, a Zuni up to date, up to date with uh, climate change, up to date with water, and then other questions related to SDGs. It's a, it's a very dynamic to 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 maintain this this life on the screen. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments um, from the audience? Um, we'd be happy to hear about the work that you're doing if you'd uh, like to share um, any work that you might be leading within this space uh, of ESG, SDGs, um, geospatial information and technologies. We also, I think we've shared um, or maybe we can share our uh, contact information in the chat for anyone who would like to follow up with uh, any questions or comments or requests. Great, yes, feel free to share your work in the chat as well. We'll be saving the chat and we'll review um, all of the links and information that you've all shared with us. Great. Perfect. Um, for uh, we have, I think my colleagues have shared the link to our website, and we have our contact information available on the website. Um, if you'd like to reach out via email, um, Arbit, thank you for sharing your email. Um, if we don't have any other questions or comments, uh, I think we can uh, close the session and stay in touch. Um, via via email and um, we've been talking about maybe uh, future events or um, uh, turning this into a webinar series so stay tuned we might have um, other events coming up 
uh, in the future. Is anyone working on using GIS to track trees uh, for carbon credits? Um, we, uh, I'll, I'll answer that before um, I hand it over to my colleagues. I don't think we have anything on our platform, um, but uh, happy to share um, some uh, resources uh, that would be relevant um, to, to this work. If you don't mind emailing us, um, we can share that information with you, but uh, we don't have as of yet anything on our platform. Great. Okay. Well, once again, thanks to um, all the, the speakers uh, for your time and for your presentation today. Um, and we hope to continue the discussion uh, with you and also with our audience uh, and to learn more about um, what everyone's doing within this space and uh, to explore opportunities to work with each other to advance the SDGs and the SG. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a great thank day. You. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.